Marble Theater in beautiful downtown Marble Falls, Texas. I want to say, uh, first of all, before we get started, happy Veterans Day. Yes. If you're a veteran out there, thank you for your service. And if you know a veteran, make sure that you call them today or see them and tell them thanks for what they did to make to keep this country free. I uh, am Gordon Ames. They call me Big G. I uh, host a show called Big G's Texas Road Show on the Real Deal 93.5 KWK and 1230 AM. Uh, 935 is in Junction, uh, 1230 is in Kerrville, and I am happy to thank you Bridget London for allowing me to be part of this and to uh, spend a little time with uh, some of my musical heroes here on a Sunday afternoon in Marble Falls. We've got uh, a lot of great music lined up for you today. We've got a lot of great folks in the audience and uh, behind the curtain backstage here as well. And we are, hope to bring you a great uh, afternoon of entertainment. So, having said that, 11, 11, 12. And y'all forgive me, because I did not memorize my lines before I got up here. A day of music, community, and connection. A big welcome to everyone here, and to all the folks joining us over the world for this event via Ustream TV. We're going to be saying hello and howdy to uh, some of the folks that we know are tuned in throughout the afternoon. I want to say a big thank you to Northland Communications for providing the internet connection. Russell Buster from uh, Uptown Theater. Kathleen Hudson and Texas Heritage Music Foundation. Addicted to Radio.com. Isn't that a great one? If you're going to have an addiction, why not radio, huh? Dewberry Jam Community Radio, Billy Do Dewberry, thank you for being here this morning and or this afternoon for being part of this. Uh, Radio Memphis, Lori Harrison, Vicki Field, all right, Lewis Dodd, yes sir, there he is, all right, and we are MarbleFalls.com for the help of putting on today's event. We have got. Uh, the Lukenbach poet here, Walt Perryman, is going to be uh, gracing us. Come on up here, Walt. And what we're going to do is we're going to have Walt come out in between sets and uh, give us his take on uh, down home logic. How's that sound, Walt? That sounds pretty good to me. All right, all right. We've got a lot of great performers. Um, I am not going to go through them all right now. I think everybody here knows who is playing but we'll have a little something to say about each and every one of them as we bring them on. So without further ado, again, thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in and welcome the Spirit of the Outlaws reunion. Thank you, Bridget London, for making all this possible for the idea and then making it all this happen. We all love you, Bridget, and uh, man, we sure appreciate this. So. Walt Perryman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Lukenbach Court. Hello, everybody. My name is Walt Perryman. I tell two stories. All my stories are true except two. They're part near true. <laughs> but uh, you know, before I get started, I always put up this warning. If I start looking like a dying calf in a hailstorm, don't worry, I'm just fine. <laughs> That's just the way I look if I forget my next line. Sometimes my mind may wander and I may lose my place. You'll know when it happens by the blank look upon my face. Like that. Just a little bit of history here. I grew up out in West Texas in the oil field. And I went over and spent 26 years in Saudi Arabia. I came back with a wheelbarrow full of money. Then I got the stock market. I still got the wheelbarrow. <laughs> That's about the story of my life right there. But, uh, but I hang out in Lucan Park, Texas nowadays. Uh, I went there about 10 years ago to drink a beer and never left. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, Walt, have you lived down here all your life? I said, not yet. You know? <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to tell a few poems here. Everybody calls this cowboy poetry, but mine's just about, you know, a bit of everything, but the explainiest cowboy hat. I'm not a full-time working cowboy or anything like that, but I came from the old school, supposed to earn a cowboy hat. 
But I did a lot of riding, but it's been many years ago. A lot about being a cowboy, I'm sure don't really know. But I tried calf roping one time. My calf come out and shoot like a bat out of hell. Me and my horse bolted out with a ride on his tail. I swing a good loop, and my horse took a sharp left. He took us off course. Well, when my horse cut that left, when I let go of the rope, my loop fell down, and I roped my own horse. <laughs> well, I've been on some roundups. If I go on one more, that will be two. So let me tell you about my roundup story to you. We got my roundup, and I had that last little dog you got in the corral. I feel really good about having done so well. I had to get off my horse to close that gate when I did. I tripped and fell down on the draft on the cuckoo birds. I never will forget laying there thinking, I hope I'm a cowboy, I didn't see that. The truth is, I tripped over my spurs. <laughs> we got my separator working team, just like old cowboy Joe said, start with no bull cast, castrating, doctoring, and branding each head. Now I never heard such a ruckus and all the desperate cries. At that third cap, I realized why when I finally opened my eyes. We worked on cattle out there, went on a pickup truck, sat down and drank a few beers. But all we could do is reminisce about how them little bulls to go on little steers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a full-time working cowboy or anything like that. You know what, folks? I'm going to wear this hat. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm in the computer. Me and my computer don't get along very good, and I don't think we ever will. <laughs> right now, I think God will buy us. <laughs> I don't know where to stick the pickle. <laughs> the other day I wrote a big old long story and it took me all day. Then I hit the wrong button and my story went away. When that stuff disappears, where does it go? If I would have Bill Gates' phone number, I would call him and <laughs> see if he might know. About three days later, I hit another key. My story I lost, it all come back to me. But too late, I wrote my story with paper and pen. I don't guess I ever know what my lost story had been. Sometime I log on the surfing net, check my email. You're not there very long before some connection will fail. Uh -huh. I started looking about just the other night. Some of us said, what, did you give a goo of yourself? <laughs> we almost got in a fight. <laughs> but they said if you had a computer problem, best thing to do is just boot it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been thinking about getting there my 357. I just shoot it. I paid a lot of money for some kind of computer protection. We just said I get it working on here about six round injection. I don't guess there will be known to walk the computer nerd. Right now, I don't care if I ever type in another password. <laughs> I've had a computer and I'm finally drawing a line. From here on out, a big chief line tablet and a cigar box will do me <laughs> just fine. <laughs> I graduated from high school and 42 years later I went to my first high school reunion. <laughs> True story. I went to my high school reunion just so I could see from my old classmates and ladies over to me. It started in the morning, I got there about 10. My stomach hurting bad for trying to keep it sucked in. <laughs> but my old classmates were looking pretty old. Our body parts sure was starting to sag. About the only one I recognized the ones with a name tag. A bunch of us sat on the table over there to reminisce about our high school education. But all we went out and talked about was doctor procedures and our medication. Now there's around about four or five of us looking down to the lap. That's when it dawned on me. It's getting about time for a nap. You know, I try to stay young, at least young in my heart. I'm doing everything I can to not just fall apart. But sometimes to look in the mirror, it's not really me that I see. There's an old man in there looking back at me. But I go to the next room and I walk around with a great big smile. Try to keep my stomach stuck in. Try to stay in the now. <laughs> Speaking of that, I know I'm back to stop by the Freshburg Athletic Club. I was met by this guy she was so pretty in the trim. Before I knew what was going on, I was a member of the gym. <laughs> we sat there about 20 minutes on what we're going to do and when we're going to begin. And there again, my stomach's hurting from trying to keep it sucked in. <laughs> Next day, I went up for workout number one and she met me with a smile. She put me on a treadmill and made me run up about a mile. She laid me on a bench, put a barbell in my hand. I talked and put more weight on her. So I shot the looking girl high with the man. <laughs> I guess I did it. Next day, I couldn't get out of bed. I was still alive, but I was wishing I was dead. Workout number two, she said, today we're going to work out our lower body parts. I said, well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> then I heard her tell a girlfriend over there, she thought I was built like something called a kill to eat. I did a little bunch of squats, and I thought, man, this is a piece of cake. Next day, I'm going to wreck my car. Couldn't mess on the brake. <laughs> I began to see twerk out when she'd meet me at the door. She wasn't quite as pretty as she was the one before. 
<laughs> Break out our five. That little skinny girl looked her right into the eyes. Said, sweetheart, I'm going to look about drink some beer. I don't need any more exercise. <laughs> poet Walt Perryman here. All right. Well, again, welcome to Uptown Marble Theaters in beautiful downtown Marble Falls. Our next guest. You guys don't understand. I was listening to his dad when I was. Uh, oh, I was this tall, but I was about this big. Okay. <laughs> The great Steve Young, and of course Jubilee, our next uh, performer. Uh, he has music in his blood, and I'm going to tell you what. Uh, thank you, Bridget London, for giving me uh, a script to go by here, because there's so much great information about these guys that I would forget. Um, he is uh, the son of Steve Young, of course, the guy that wrote Seven Bridges Road, and a great Waylon Jennings uh, tune that y'all may have heard called Lonesome, Ornery, and Mean. Okay, and uh, Terry Newkirk, who wrote My Oklahoma. So growing up with Waylon Jennings and Towns Van Zandt around the house, it's no surprise that Jubal's gift come with strong influence of the outlaw country music. Or how about movement? That's even better. And singer-songwriter movement of the 1970s. He's currently touring on the album, taking home, ladies and gentlemen, Jubal Lee Young. Yes, Thank you, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Speaking of Steve Young, I'll do you a Steve Young song. Well, I wake up every morning about the break of dawn.
alternative make. But I got the, I got this one here. I don't think it's going to be hard to get all the DJs in the room to play this one. <laughs> it's called Texas Pirate Radio. <laughs> Go back. 
I'm slow down just a little bit. This is on my 09 CD, which I don't have any with me. I'm currently out of print on those. They're still available online. So it's uh, called The Last Free Place of America. And this is uh, called Fall for You.
started coming down here. And the first place I really hung out in much around here was Houston. So I understand the rivalries between all the three big cities. But I really, I like, I like them all, but I, I, felt, I felt in love with Houston first. My first Texas love. I wrote them this, uh, this song. It's called Neon River.
the bathroom, but that's why uh, Gordon's here. He'll tell wow. you. <laughs> um, uh, this one is, uh, I wrote this about Texas girls. I, I, I like, I'm partial to them, I gotta, I gotta say. <laughs> and it's aptly named, it's called Texas Girls. <laughs> uh, it'll be on the next CD. And thank y'all so much. My name is Julie. Uh, well, you might know that here. I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. So here he goes, Texas girls. Thank you, Bridget, for asking me down here. It's been a pleasure to meet all of my Facebook friends that I have never met in person yet. <laughs> and I'll be back. Uh, 